abortion is a hot button topic that we have all been exposed to since we have been very young. And we have heard of abortion going all the way to the Supreme Court and back. And this has been something that we have just all heard of. So today I'm going to be talking a little bit about how your worldview affects your view on abortion and why we have seen that in early and modern America. So there are primarily two worldviews that are prevalent in the world today. We have the naturalistic worldview and we have the creationist worldview. The creationist worldview was the worldview of early America. And basically in this worldview, we believe that a personal God created all things. And this was created through intelligent design, not chance. And we believe that the earth is around 6,000 years old. And the first human beings did not evolve from an animal ancestry, but were specifically created in fully human form from the start. So in the creationist worldview, we have a very specific view on the fetus. And that is that the baby from conception is fully human, therefore abortion is murder. Early America had this really strong creationist view when they looked at abortion. In fact, in the 1600s and 1700s, the punishment for attempted abortion was jail or banishment, and abortion itself was death. Even for women who had been raped or impregnated wrongly, they were strictly advised not to abort. The president of Harvard University, which was a very elite institution, educational institution at that time, and also had a big say on social and political issues, the president said, if anyone purposely endeavor to destroy the fruit of the womb, whether they actually do it or not, they are guilty of murder in God's account. Notice also the terminologies they're using here, fruit of the womb, murder. We don't see that terminology nowadays. There were laws that were put in place against abortion. Here's an example law um, in, in, from the General Assembly of Connecticut. I won't read fully through it, but it says, Every person who shall willfully and maliciously administer any deadly poison or other noxious and destructive substance, referring to the abortion process, um, thereby to murder or thereby to cause or procure the miscarriage of any woman, then being quick with child, shall be duly convicted and shall suffer imprisonment during his natural life, meaning a life term of prison if you try to abort a child. A Wisconsin law said that those who performed abortion would be in charge of a second degree murder. So back then, abortion was viewed as a murder and the terms they used was child and not you know, what they use nowadays. So there was another worldview that came in the 1800s and this was by a very famous person. Who do you think it was? Charles Darwin, thanks dad. <laughs> Charles Darwin. <laughs> So naturalism is the idea or belief that, nat that only natural laws and forces operate in the universe. And in the, po in the naturalistic worldview, we have a couple postulates, and that is that there is no supernatural power of being. All reality is interpreted within the realm of the physical world. The earth is therefore millions of years old, and humans are a result of millions of years of evolution, genetic mutations, and natural selections. So in the theory of natural selection, there's four postulates that all my homies from Issues and Origins know, right? So individuals within species are variable. These traits are inherited. Some individuals are more fit than others. And when we mean fit, we don't mean physically fit. We mean how, how they can survive. And this increased fit is not, fitness is not random, meaning that these traits were more inherited and passed down through genetic mutations. The most key point that we need to get from the natural selection is that the most capable and fittest organisms are worthy of life and reproduction, according to Darwin. Now, Charles Darwin had a beloved cousin named Sir Francis Galton who was so inspired by his theory of natural selection, he came out with another theory called the theory of eugenics, which was actually practiced. And eugenics is the practice or advocacy of controlled selective breeding of human populations to improve the population's genetic composition. This is just a practicing of racism. He believed that eugenics provided the means to give the more suitable races a better chance at living. Now there's two points we need to get from his ideology. First, people became the judge of who got to live and reproduce and who were not worthy of life and reproduction. And people deemed unfit were not worthy to live.
Now, as I was sitting in Issues and Origins class, I had this thought come to me. Um, I was thinking, what if abortion was a form of eugenics? And so I read an article in the Harvard Law Review um, written by Chief Justice Thomas, and he states, abortion is an act rife with the potential for eugenic manipulation. Technological advances have only heightened the eugenic potential for abortion, as abortion can now be used to eliminate children with unwanted characteristics, such as a particular sex or disability. He continues, um, abortion is often employed for eugenics purposes, especially for sex selection and disability elimination. Abortion is used by women and men to kill girls because they are girls. Abortions are obtained in substantial numbers in order to cull the disabled before birth because they are disabled. And we can see this in so many ways, and especially in countries in Asia. If you're a girl, um, a lot of people will abort the child, and they will also abort um, children who are disabled. And therefore, we can see that abortion is the instrument of eugenics, which was the product of natural selection. So why, why are these people advocating so highly for abortion, right? Why are they advocating, especially in a society where, where they're trying to be inclusive, right? They're trying to accept everybody. Why are they saying just kill off children? Well, it's the way they view a fetus. According to evolutionists, a fetus is actually just a cluster of distinct individual cells. They believe that when the egg and the sperm fuse, they form an embryo, but they do not form a human being. A famous evolutionary biologist, Jerry Coyne, says, a person is not created at fer fertilization. We have a zygote that will now go on to continue to development. That zygote is an undifferentiated ball of cells without mentation or the ability to feel pain. And there's no evidence it has a soul or anything differentiating it from the embryos of any number of vertebrate species. And here are five arguments I got from the book Politically Correct Death, where this philosopher looks at arguments for and against abortion. So the first argument is argumentation from implantation. So they believe that the human child is not a baby until it is implanted in the mother's womb. Second, argument from quickening. The fetus is fully human when the mother can feel the child move. Argument from viability. The baby cannot independently survive by itself, so it's not a fully human child. Argument from birth, since we count human life from birth, then the child is not a fully human baby because it's not born yet. I really thought these arguments were kind of weird. Anyway, argument of appearance, the baby does not have the full appearance of a human while in the womb, so it's not a human. I just Anyway, <laughs> so the naturalist view is the fetus is not fully human, but a cluster of cells, therefore abortion is not murder. So we have the two views. And so I went and I researched and I found these two scientists and they're both not creationists, but they both have studied, um, you know, the studied this, this topic. And first one is Dr. Jaime Gordon from um, Mayo Clinic. And she says, I have never seen in my own scientific reading long before I became concerned with issues of life of this nature that anyone has ever argued that life did not begin at the moment of conception and that it was a human conception if it resulted from the fertilization of the human egg by the human sperm. Another, um, another doctor, Dr. Michelin Matthews Broth from Harvard Medical School says, it is scientifically correct to say that an individual's human life begins at conception when egg and sperm join to form the zygote. And this developing human always is a member of our species in all stages of its life. Now we have seen the evolutionary worldview become so prevalent in our society, so much so that in 2015, Pew Research Center came out with a poll saying that 65% of adults say that humans and other living things have evolved. And that was back in 2015. We know the numbers have definitely increased. So now that the, the society has, is viewing the world through the evolutionary lens, do they view abortion through the evolutionary lens as well? I was reading this article and it just looked like this part was from an evolutionary biology textbook. It says, viewed through Darwin's prism, abortion can be seen as a tool that women use to increase their survivability, their ability to compete for limited resources, and even their ability to have greater future reproductive success. Abortion can be seen as a tool in the evolutionary mindset. 
So nowadays we see advocates for abortion being called as reproductive rights. This is for the rights for women, but in reality, it is just the murder of children. Here is the most recent Gallup poll taken in 2022. How, how is America doing? Pro-choice is the green line, and we are 55% of Americans believe in pro-choice, while only 39% believe in pro-life. So my question is for you all, why does your worldview matter? Why does the worldview of the people around you matter or the ch your future children matter? Your worldview defines whether you give an unborn child the chance to live, the life that they deserve to live, the life that God gave them to live. And when we as humans left God and we left God's love and we tried to go away from God, we left the love that we have for other people. So I hope that we can remember that there are children who do not have a voice and that we can pray for them and do something about it. Thank you.